So here's the situation. It's an important event. People are going to be dressed nice and you are going to be playing a pivotal role. You're going to be speaking. People are going to be looking at you. So how do you dress appropriately but not dress boring? The answer is to wear a sword with a pair of loafers with diamonds on the buckle. Now, some of you guys may be thinking, oh, it's a little bit too much, a little bit over the top, a little bit too flashy. I mean, seriously, who wears diamonds on their shoes? I must be describing Harry Styles getting an award at a fancy ceremony or something, right? No, the event I'm describing happened in April 1789, and the guy I'm talking about was also wearing homespun suit, and the sword really wasn't out of place because he's a former general. Yep, gentlemen, the guy I'm describing here with the diamonds on the shoes, that is George. Washington. And the event I'm describing is the first inauguration of the President of the United States. And I have to say, the lead up to this was pretty interesting because a lot of people did not want to see anything close to the monarchy. On the flip side, this was the highest office of this new country and it needed to be treated with respect. Now, gentlemen, I share that little tidbit of history with you because I want to stress a point. There is never a reason to wear a boring outfit. And in today's video, gents, I'm going to show you how to avoid the common mistakes and how to always look good with a bit of spice. You ready, gents? Let's do it. So the first mistake that makes an outfit boring is that you don't have the courage to be the best dressed man in the room or to be a guy that can wear something that draws a little bit of attention. Because if you look good, you are going to stand out. If you're going to stand out, people are going to notice you. The ladies are going to notice you. Other guys are going to notice you. There will probably be somebody that may say something because you're making them look bad. So they want to try to talk you down. Ignore those people. You got to have the courage to be able to deal with the attention and know that, yeah, I do look good. I feel comfortable. I feel great. I don't mind actually people looking me up and down and being impressed. Seriously, gents, this point deserves emphasis because our society as a whole does not push for men to dress well, for men to dress in a way that draws a little bit of attention, for men to actually look good. If you look on television, men are basically blend in. The father figure is always like they make him out to be a buffoon. And if you stand out, if you dress well, there will be haters. This is inevitable, but understand and feel bad for them because they're not hating on you. Really, they're upset with themselves because you are making them look bad. Their lack of effort is showing and they don't like it and they're trying to put you down. Now, speaking of courage, let me ask, do you have what it takes to be honest to yourself when it comes to your performance in the bedroom? Seriously, gents, there are millions and millions of men out there dealing with issues in the bedroom with their sex lives. And guess what? They are doing nothing about it because they refuse to face the problem. Well, gentlemen, that's why I'm proud to bring you today's sponsor, Roman, because they're helping men address a variety of sexual health needs. So first up, maybe you're not lasting long enough, a very common problem. And guess what? Roman offers discreet wipes that help you last four times longer in bed, no prescription needed. Or maybe you're dealing with erectile dysfunction. Well, Roman offers prescription medication that helps achieve and maintain a stronger erection. And the best part, gents, is that everything is online. No waiting rooms, no awkward conversations, Guys, everything can be done from the comfort of your home. Now, if medication is appropriate, it'll be sent right to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. So, gents, to get 20% off your first order, you want to use the link in the description of today's video, ro.co slash rmrs. Again, that's ro.co slash rmrs for 20% off your first order. I've been working with them for years, a great company, highly recommended. Use that link in the description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. The next mistake that makes you a boring dresser is you don't play to your strengths. A lot of times we're wearing the same thing that everyone else is wearing versus looking at what colors work with our complexion, what outfits work specifically with our body build. So if you've got dark hair, if you've got dark skin, if you are Southeast Indian, if you are of African descent, there are so many different colors that you can bring into your wardrobe that yes, maybe a Western palette just isn't going to do you justice. You have to go out there and find the colors that really pop next to your skin. That being said, if you've got the light white skin of the Irish with the red hair, there are just certain colors that are going to overpower you. So you're going to want to go with more muted palettes, more muted colors that just let your natural handsomeness, your ruggedness actually shine through and not over.
overpower you. Now, what if you're a tall, thin guy? Well, being able to layer, being able to wear bulkier sweaters, this is something that you can do and it's not going to fatten you up. If it actually does, that's not necessarily a bad thing to give you a little bit of weight around the midsection, a little bit of weight around the neck. When you're a relatively skinny guy, it's going to even you out. Maybe you're a heavier guy, a bigger guy, a stout guy. Well, guess what? All of these high-waisted trousers, find some that work for you. The high-waisted look is actually something from the 1920s, 1930s, and it really looks good for a man that carries his weight, you know, a little bit around the midsection. You find the right pair, match these with suspenders, maybe even a jacket. This is a great look for you. And one of the easiest ones out there is to amplify your eyes with clothing. Let's say you've got these piercing blue eyes, maybe green eyes. Wear clothing that matches it because it's going to pull out those colors. It's going to make them more stark. It's going to draw attention to them and people are going to start to notice your eyes even more. We've all got things about our bodies that we don't like. The trick here is to find what you do like about your body. Yeah, you're a little bit heavy, but you've got arms. You spend a lot of time in the gym, so don't be afraid to show those things off by rolling up the sleeves. Maybe going with a short sleeve shirt that just looks great and shows off all the work you've put in the gym. All right, Jen, so now let's get into the style details because I get it that you're being told you got to wear a dark suit, so that gives you no flexibility, right? wrong. So many options. Dark suits, okay, you can go with charcoal gray, you can go with navy, and then there are so many semi-solids, so many different fabrics you can bring in. You can go with a herringbone weave, you can go with, you know, maybe a little bit of a Glen check. So many different looks in here. You can go with something with a little bit of texture, maybe even bring in a flannel. Be careful with that, it's going to make it a bit more casual. But if you know what your options are, all of a sudden you can start having fun with the different fabrics, with the different patterns. And speaking of patterns, I mean, just look right here at this jacket right here. It's green. Green, yes, but that pattern right there, that little bit of check right in there, it just is really nice and it's something that sets it apart. Yes, it's a, maybe you could even argue it's a little bit loud, makes the outfit a bit more casual. So that is something to understand with patterns. But so many places in an outfit you can bring in patterns. Now, I really like shirts having fun here. And the reason being is shirts are relatively inexpensive. So you can bring in a variety of stripes. And when you look at all the different shirt patterns out there from bangle stripes to candy stripes, plenty of options. You don't know always have to go with a solid white or a solid blue. That forms the basis of a man's wardrobe, but you got lots of options here. That being said, accessories are really where you start to have fun. Pocket squares, you can bring in you know, a variety of patterns depending on the way you fold it, but paisleys, we see these in pocket squares, we see these in neckties, occasionally we see these in shirts. Those accent pieces, really it's easy to have a lot of fun, bring in the colors and also bring in different makes, different types of fabrics. Silk is one that really has a nice sheen to it. When mixed with wool, it just looks amazing. And I alluded to it, but I want to go into more detail. A big mistake is that people don't understand their different fabric options. I've talked about silk, I've talked about wool, but you've got suede, you have leather, and they are different. A suede jacket is going to be a bit more sophisticated, a little bit higher end, even though sometimes they cost a lot less than a leather jacket. But leather is going to be a little bit harder wear, a little a little bit more masculine, a little bit hardier. And when it comes to jackets, you've got tons of options. You've got linens, you have cottons, you have in this case right here, I've got a, this is going to be a little bit of a cashmere mixed in with the wool if I remember correctly. Beautiful fabric, very soft, has a little bit more of a napped weave. If you're not familiar with napped weaves, you're going to see these on flannels. Give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional look, very soft, just something that's great for the fall, winter, and a cool spring. And this one's not going to be for everybody, but really works well in the cooler months, and that is corduroy. Made from cotton, it's actually pretty durable and it makes for a great pair of trousers. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor, smash that like button. Seriously, when you engage with the like button, let the YouTube gods know that this video is worth watching. Seriously, it helps the algorithm and, you know, it just is good for the channel. Now, this next mistake I've brought up already a couple times and I've danced around it, but I want to give it its own point and that is that most men misuse color. First up, they don't even use it. They're scared of it. And I get it. To me, salt or in color, they're very similar. You want to just add a little bit. You add too much salt, all of a sudden you can't eat the meal. The same with too much color, I feel overpowers look. There are some men that can pull this off and they're a little bit more fashion forward. Me, I'm a little bit more conservative in my dress and I find just bringing in just a bit of color is about drawing the eyes, adding a bit of pop, and you can have so much fun with it. But I try to leave it in general for accessories. That being said, it doesn't have to stop there. When you realize when it comes to blue, there are dozens of shades of blue, if not more. When it comes to gray, 50 shades of gray, right? When it comes to greens, tons of options here when it comes to browns. And when you start to realize, oh, wow, why does that brown 
work with that green? How is it that this brown also works great with a blue? You start to understand how colors go together. You start to understand the basics of the color wheel, how analogous colors, how, you know, colors that are right next to us, how colors that are right across from each other, how they actually can provide high contrast, how they naturally kind of work together. And you start to experiment and have fun. And experimentation, that deserves its own point because most men avoid experimentation. They don't want to make a mistake when it comes to their clothing. And I get it. You don't want to be stared at. You don't want to have anyone say anything bad about you. We, we all feel this, but don't be afraid to try something new, especially if you can back out of it. One of the things I recommend is to layer clothing and know that, okay, if I don't really like the way maybe this necktie looks, that the outfit will look good without it or maybe bring a backup or, you know, I'm not sure about wearing a pocket square in my jacket. I've never done it. Well, guess what? Simply go with a simple presidential fold. And if you are that conscious about it halfway through the event, just simply tuck it in and no one will be the wiser. It'll hide in there, but most likely you'll forget about it until you get a compliment or somebody says, you know what? I love that combination. I never would. This just looks amazing on you. And that right there is going to, you know, here's the thing is, we all sometimes have fashion faux pas when we make these mistakes, but you've just got to accept that that will happen sometimes. But what more likely is going to happen is that you're going to look at yourself in the mirror. You're going to say, you know what? I like this look. I feel good about it. And you're going to go out there and your confidence is going to carry you through. On top of that, if you nail it, if it really does look good and you get a few compliments, you are going to have that as a go-to outfit and that experimentation, that mixing those things together that you've never tried, all of a sudden it's going to give you the courage, the confidence to do more of it. Now, where do you get the ideas for these experiments? Well, that's the next mistake is that most guys have no fashion sense. And here's the thing is you're not born with this. You actually have to maybe look around. You have to be inspired. I love inspiration. So I'll go to Barnes and Noble. I'll be browsing, you know, going through some of the magazines. That's a great way. You can go on Pinterest. You can go on Instagram. Maybe look on, join one of those Facebook groups where people are posting their outfit of the day. I know we've got one at our, you know, RMRS group, which I'll link to down in the description. Point being is you go someplace and you are inspired. Watch a few movies with stylish men and try to imitate those outfits of George Clooney, of Ryan Gosling, of, you know, Idris Elba. Find somebody who who's again, their colors. I talked about this in the first point. Maybe you've got a certain color complexion, find a movie star, find someone that's putting content out there about what works with their complexion and imitate it. Nobody is going to notice that you are copying the looks of, you know, old James Bond. Now they're going to say, wow, that looks just really good. Even the James Bond enthusiasts, I've got a few of those guys that are friends of mine and I see them doing the exact looks from Spectre or from Casino Royale. And here's the thing is nobody, you know, unless except us in the know, know what they're doing. But for most people like, wow, that looks like a great combination. And they know that, yes, they were inspired by James Bond. But even when you try to exactly copy one of these looks, it's very difficult to do. You oftentimes have to compromise or change something up and you just end up looking great, you look amazing. And you start to own this look. This becomes something you go for. And does this mean, you know, you need to be going and watching the runways? I mean, if you're really fashion forward and you're into that stuff, go for it. You know, not my cup of tea, but I know some of you guys are into high fashion. Some of you guys are into big brands and that stuff is all great. But I think for a guy just starting off, finding a few people that can inspire you, especially if they have the same build or if they've got a similar color palette, this is going to be one of the best places for you to find sweaters, for you to find, you know, just inspirational pieces and try to mimic, try to find those, go look for those online. Now, this next one is two mistakes and that is not knowing your history and then not exercising your options. So a lot of times when I talk about an item, I like to bring in the history. And the reason I do that is so many men are scared to wear a scarf or they're scared to wear a certain type of dress shoe or, you know, I don't know, high-waisted trousers with suspenders because, oh, I don't see other people doing this. But historically, men have been masculine, strong men, men that I have set and established not only this country, but countries around the world, great leaders dressed this way. When you go back and you look at Martin Luther King, you go back and you look at Franklin Roosevelt, you go back and you look at, like I talked to Washington earlier, but you look at all of these men that have worn these outfits and how they've been able to just dress in a manner that impresses. And you realize, wow, I could actually pull off a similar look. Now it, I may stand out. And again, you got to have the courage and the confidence to be able to stand out from the crowd. But all of a sudden you re realize historically, you've got tons of different items that you can bring into your outfit from tons of different hats out there. I really do love the whole newsboy. Uh, you know, I think Peaky Blinders has been bringing back some of those caps, just really good looking headwear, but you've got so many options 
options when it comes to headwear. And yes, men are wearing hats that were in baseball caps, but how about you step it up a bit and go for something that's more stylish, something that's going to get you compliments. When it comes to neckwear, yes, the bow tie, you rarely see it, but why not actually wear a bow tie? Try. I mean, who can be upset with a guy wearing a bow tie? It's such a disarming piece of gear, yet it's been around for hundreds of years and it's worn in black tie, but you, you know, Churchill pulled off a bow tie. So if you need to, you know, again, you've got all these great examples of manly men, men that have shaped the world that have worn these pieces. Why not find a way to bring it into your outfit? And all of a sudden you start getting compliments. You stand out from the crowd. You look amazing and you're definitely not boring. And let me hit on that last mistake, exercising your options. That means practice wearing the stuff. So many people out there saying, Antonio, man, I would never wear a scarf. I'd never wear a bow tie. I'd never wear suspenders because it's uncomfortable. Here's the thing is it's not uncomfortable. It's just unfamiliar to you. And there's a big difference because you haven't tried wearing it. any man that has a great pair of high of, you know, high waisted trousers and you've got it versus a belt. Belts are constricting around the waist area. That suspender with high, you know, waisted trousers, that's going to be much more comfortable. The thing is you got to get used to it. You got to practice. You got to put in the reps. You've got to see what it's like. And that's why I advise having some of this clothing, wearing it around your house, not even thinking about it because then you're going to step out, go to the store. You're going to possibly, you know, wear this out, not even thinking about what you have on. Next thing you know, you're going to be out and about wearing that outfit, looking good. You're going to get a compliment and it is going to change everything because you're going to realize you were worried about something that you didn't need to be and that you can start dressing like the man you know yourself to be. All right, Jen. So if you enjoyed this video, you're going to love this one. 12 style mistakes that are making you look fat. Even if you're skinny guys, you want to check out this video because if you're making these mistakes, it just is not flattering. If you're a bigger guy, you definitely want to check out this video because I'm going to save you from, yeah, you want to look large and in charge, not fat and sloppy. And I got you covered in this video, some great tips.